But if you have your Bibles this evening, we'll be in Matthew 20, and we'll begin reading in verse 29. And if you're familiar with your Bible, and if you if you read it at all, at least in the last week or so, I'm sure we've examined Matthew chapter 21, and so on and so forth, up until Matthew 28. And we are familiar that in Matthew chapter 21, we're about to see our Lord and Savior enter into the city of Jerusalem. But where we're picking up this evening, I just want to hit the rewind button and uh, kind of repeat. Can I repeat what you said a minute ago and say it's okay to talk about what our Lord did for us more than just once a year? Amen. But I'm going to hit the rewind button just a little bit and see this journey beginning in verse 29. The Bible says, and as they departed from Jericho, knowing they're heading to Jerusalem. Amen. As they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And I could only imagine through the three and a half years or so of our Lord's ministry, it was constantly a flock or a crowd of people wherever he was. And I'm sure all of these people had their fair share of needs. I'm sure some of them were sick, afflicted. They had family members uh, they needed help for. And I'm sure all of them had troubles. All of them had sorrows. I'm sure some of them fought depression. Some had anxiety. So I'd say our Lord and Savior through these three years had his hands full. Amen. Not that I will ever put a limit on my limitless God. Amen. But knowing now in the place that we're reading of, he is now knowing that this clock is going to start counting down. He knows that he's just miles away from this city that he's about to enter into. And just days later, this crowd that is chanting Hosanna will be chanting crucify. And he is familiar that it's getting close, that he is about to fulfill his entire purpose of coming in the first place. I could only imagine he's dealing with these people complaining and crying and moping around. Of course, uh, we've read through the Old Testament. We see how these people react, uh, and I'm sure it's only carried on down the family lineage. Amen? So he's dealing with their issues, and of course, it's on his mind that, hey, I'm about to be imprisoned. I'm about to be beaten beyond recognition. I'm about to bear their cross, and I will taste sin for the first time. All of this is on his mind. Amen? And of course, can I remind us, seeing and briefly, he's 100% man here. But simultaneously, <laughs> he's 100% God. So as he's balancing these Israelites, the children of Israel, and he's balancing his emotions uh, that he will face later in the week, uh, he is still telling the tide, hey, whoa, 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 that's too far. He's still commanding the sun where to set. He's still telling the stars where they should be hung. Hey, man. So I, I'm never going to put a limit on my God. Amen. But this evening, could we come to an agreement? that there's a lot going on. Hey Amen? There's a lot going on. But I'm thankful. We read in verse 30, And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of David. And the multitude, now listen, I could preach on this tonight, if the Lord allow me, he hasn't allowed me here. They give me the green light yet. The multitude rebuked them. That sounds like a lot of Christians nowadays. My need is greater than yours. Hello. They rebuked them because they should hold their peace. In 2023, we say nobody got time for that. Amen. Praise Lord. But they cried out the more, saying, "Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of David." Praise the Lord for this. And Jesus stood still and called them. <laughs> Amen. In the midst of all this commotion, everything that is going on, I'm thankful he stopped still in his tracks. Amen. And he said this, what will ye that I shall do unto you? And I'm sure if we're honest with ourselves, we're all going to cry out the same thing they cried out. They said, Lord that our eyes may be open. <laughs> Amen. And listen to this. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, 
and they followed him. Three things I, I, I just want to briefly share that's been laid on my heart. I'm thankful in knowing it is a wonderful joy that God Almighty in the middle of everything, in the middle of keeping control of everything, order in everything, will stop what he's doing and help those in need. Amen? I know this evening, the first thing I'd like to bring to our attention is the order of their healing in verse 34. The order of their healing, it says, Jesus first had compassion on them. Amen? I'm thankful that I'm speaking of a God of love tonight. Amen? As a matter of fact, it goes a bit deeper. My God is love. Amen? And I'm so thankful. He didn't come to condemn the world, but he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen? He died on that cross because he loved us. Amen? The only reason he came to this wicked, ungodly, sinful, vile, and rotten world is because he loved us. And I'm thankful for the compassion he extends in our direction. Amen. He says he had compassion on them, but then it goes further. And he touched their eyes. I'm thankful he loves me, but I'm thankful he touched me. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Glory. Hallelujah. February 17th, 2001, as a four-year-old boy, he touched me. Amen. And I've never been the same since. Praise the Lord. That story will never grow old. Amen. And I, I, I see he had compassion on them, but then he touched him. It's only by his hands something like this can be done. Amen. To change them completely. But then we notice it says, and immediately. And I was pondering upon this just briefly, and really, I think it's too big of a thought for my pea-sized brain. But I began to realize, hey, I live in this thing, but a stand called time, right? I'm counting down the minutes, the seconds, the milliseconds. I'm checking off the dates. I'm counting the months. I'm remembering the years. Hello? We're counting the years. We live in time. But God himself is outside of time. Glory to God. So my pea-sized brain come up with this. Could it be that in all of our lives, every prayer that we pray, every need that we have, it is consistently and constantly immediately met. God hears us cry out, and immediately he answers. But it's us living in our flesh, focused on this time. Mary and Martha said, four days late. Hello, you're too late. But he showed up right on time. Amen? Listen to me, sometimes uh, it's days, it's weeks, it's months, uh, it's years, but glory be to God. God answers uh, always on time. Amen? And thank the Lord for that. I see the order of their healing. Secondly, I see the originality of their healing. And I don't want to say this lightly or whatever, uh, because obviously this isn't the first time our Lord has done something of this stature. This isn't the first time he's given a blind man sight. Amen? But listen, we read through this, and I believe uh, it is original uh, by the, the lone fact that only Jesus can do something like this. Amen! Only my God can perform a miracle to this extent. Amen. Praise the Lord. We read of some men in the New Testament that were given the ability to heal and, 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 and raise from the dead and cast out. Listen to me. Listen to me. It's by God's hand that anything like that is done in today's time. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Glory. Hallelujah. That was an apostolic gift necessary for the kickoff of the church age. Amen. No longer have need for it. My God's grace is sufficient. Amen. And my God is the one that will perform a miracle next to this one. And I'm thankful for the originality of this. I'm thankful it's once it was blind, but now I see. Nobody else but our Lord can do something like this. I'm thankful for the physical healing, 
but I'm also thankful for the spiritual healing. And I reflect back in Acts 26 uh, of Paul as he's standing before uh, King Agrippa giving his account uh, of what happened at that day on Damascus. Uh, as he says, he was blinded by light and the Son of God uh, showed up before him and demanded to him, hey, you're going out seeking after these folk, uh, but I'm going to put a different burden on your heart uh, and rather than killing them and imprisoning them, I'm going to use you to go and preach to them that their eyes may be opened, amen, and that they may be brought from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. Praise God and that their sins may be forgiven. Praise the Lord for that. It's original because only our Lord can do something like this. And lastly, it says, and they followed him. This is the outcome of their healing. Amen. Uh, the Lord's changed their life for the better. And I'm thinking when he changed my life, the least I can do is to pick up my cross and follow him. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. That's the very least I can do. It says, and they followed him. But if we could, just for a moment, let's continue reading in chapter 21, the very next verse. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, I, I believe that these two blind men were a part of this they. They're following. Amen. And then we continue reading in verse number nine. This is the multitudes that went before and that followed. Brother Zach, I believe they're a part of this group that's following. Amen. These two blind men that perhaps had been useless. The Bible isn't specific on how long they were blind, but perhaps about 10 it's their whole life. Perhaps it's several years that they've just felt hopeless. They've felt useless. Now they are being used to usher in the Son of God crying out, Hosanna, crying out, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, waving palm leaves, shouting and praising and bringing honor to this King of Israel. Amen. But oh, with me. Literally just a few pages to our right. A few days' time. I wonder if we could examine the crowd that was in the hall of Pilate. I wonder if these two men would have been found there. And instead, Brother Jason, of crying out Hosanna, they've just done been healed. And perhaps they was among the ones crying crucify. And really the challenge I present to us this evening is are we just crying out to him when it's convenient? Do we cry out where there's, when only there's a multitude around us to get some attention? Because it's so easy to allow this world to trip us up. And when we're in the midst of a mixed congregation, it's easy to lean in their direction. Instead of crying out, this man healed me. Loosen him. Let him live. He's innocent. Perhaps, just perhaps, they cried crucify. I wonder this evening, what are we crying for? Amen. Thank you. God bless you.